Hey, this is look. Oh. Uh, hey, this is Lorena, and I wanted to do a video for you on how to make applique butterflies. We're going to use those templates that I will post a video up here that I shared on how I make my templates. But today we're going to use those templates and make some beautiful butterflies. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to do inside curves turning over. I know there's a turn under and a turnover on the applique. See how beautiful that butterfly is? We're going to work on inside curves and how to curve everything over the applique and how I do it. And so I'm going to share probably several different clips of big templates on how to work bigger templates. And I'm also going to share with you how to do really pretty, intricate, little tiny butterflies. Look how pretty she is. I'll see you in turnover applique. All right, the start you're going to need is whichever one's your favorite, but I use Best Press, my iron, my Elmer's glue, my Karen Buckley scissors, and a trolley needle. Of course, your templates and your fabric. Let me just share what I learned about fabric is uh, Patek fabric works the best with this because I used this random fabric that I had. Um, it worked great. It just kind of frayed a lot and it started kind of fraying at the edges. So get your Elmer's glue and glue your template and then get your hot iron and you're going to iron uh, the fabric to your template. Now I like my glue a little bit drier so it's not that bright purple when it's brand new but it works either way. I recommend you put the glue on the edges of the template so it's really stuck. Now I love this because it doesn't shift on you. And then we're going to get our Karen Buckley scissors or any scissors you love and trim all the way around. My recommendation is trim smaller than a one fourth, a little bit larger than one eighth seam because a one fourth is too thick for smaller templates and a one eighth is too short to roll it over or turn it over into the template. So you're going to go ahead and cut all the way around on your template and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Then after you do that, you're going to start trimming into the curves, but do not get right before you hit the template. The reason you do this is so that you can trim and bring in the fabric the way you need it. And then you're going to use a paintbrush with your starch and start starching your fabric. Now, I love these templates because it's not freezer paper, so it doesn't warp on you and you don't have to worry about it falling apart. And then you're going to use your hot iron. I recommend high heat. You're going to go ahead and push in this little section, the pointy area of the iron into the template. And then you're going to get the iron and start rolling that straight away into the template. It takes practice to do this, but honestly, it's not that difficult. After you do that, what I recommend on these little pointy areas is you push in the fabric right at the pointy section and then start working the fabric on one side and work the fabric on the opposite end. So you make a pleat in that little corner and then hold it with an iron and use your trolley needle to bring the fabric in and bring it together and hold it down for a good 10 seconds. Then it won't shift on you. And then this little section, I didn't realize that I didn't trim it and see it won't curve in. But if you cut in the center and then you cut to the left or the right, right before you get to the template, this really does help bring in those curves. So here I'm using the pointy section of my iron and I'm going to push in and over. Then I'm going to use my template and turn it so I can get the fabric to be fold it over as much as I possibly can and then I'm going to lay it down and iron the opposite section. Now you can do this on both sides but in this video I only did it on one side and then start working the straightaway. Like I said in this corner I'm pushing in that corner section and holding it down so I know it's tacked in. All right, then I rotated my template, reread it with starch, and retacked that corner and held it there for a period of time, and then reworked the opposite end. Then I started working on that straight away. So when I do corners, I work on the center, right or left, and then I use that trolley needle to push the fabric to where I need it. 
underneath the iron and then I hold it for a good three seconds then we're gonna start working on this little tiny pointy section right here that's why I love this iron you can literally get the pointy section of the iron and use it to your benefit to work that fabric in I have a tendency when I'm working on curves that I work the curves in first and I hold them for a couple seconds then I go to the next curve and hold it for another couple seconds and then I use the iron to push the whole section towards the template. What I ended up doing is working this deep corner area and I got the iron and I'm pushing the template upwards while I'm getting the fabric underneath push towards the template as much as I can. This is the one way I figured to work tight areas where it's very tight to work in. I like this pointy section of my iron. It really does get in little tight places. So I'm going to get some starch and re-wet this fabric and then I'm going to work the opposite side of the fabric. So I'm going to push the fabric down while I'm pushing the template up and this is what gets that fabric to um, to move in the direction you want it to in tight little corners. And then after I did that I laid the template down, reset the fabric and ironed it and then I started pushing these little sections in my little corners. After you do this you're gonna just work all the way around on your template. If you notice I have a lot of thread fraying. I recommend if you're gonna do this kind of work patique or a bigger template works better with different types of fabric and this is what it looks like when it's completely done um, after you do this I iron the top of it and I iron the back of it again and then I pull it out of the template and then I re push the fabrics where I initially worked them in and I re iron so that the template is sitting nice and flat making sure that my fabric isn't fraying because this fabric did fray sometimes on the edges of the fabric I put Elmer's glue to make sure that they're tacked down and yeah that's how I did my little beautiful tiny butterfly all right I wanted to share another template this is a larger butterfly it works exactly the same but to be honest the bigger ones are easier to do. So here you see me pushing the fabric in and uh, using the iron kind of sweeping under and sweeping the fabric over the template. And here in the corner I like pushing the corners in first. And then using my trolley needle to push the fabric on each opposite end and holding the fabric as I'm working it in. It does this really beautiful kind of pleat that it doesn't leave little points at the edge of those curves. Once my template is completely done I go ahead and iron the top of it and then just kind of rework the fabric if I need to and then pull it out of the template and then re-iron the fabric down making sure that it's nice and flat after it's out of the template.